What's cracking? Welcome back to the HQ. I know we're in the living room as opposed to my bedroom. I hope that doesn't disappoint a lot of you guys, but we got a good video for you today. We're jumping back into the mock drafts. Basically everything has settled, right? CJ Anderson signed, that's the last big move. All we really have left is Dez. Dez is so good. He's so good that no one wants to sign him. It's incredible. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna do a mock draft today and I think I'm gonna do a mock draft every week from here on out or possibly more. If you guys like the mock drafts, I'll do two a week. We're gonna do it on the draft website, the draft app. You can do it on the actual app, you can do it on the website. It's what it looks like, doesn't matter. It's an awesome, awesome setup. It's a best ball league. For those of you guys who are not aware of what a best ball league is, it's where you only draft. All of the leagues are money leagues, so you have to pay to enter, but you can pay as little as $1 up to $1,000. But it's really good practice because everyone has to pay. So the results are realistic, right? Everyone's drafting seriously. So it's really good practice at this point in the year. And if you think you're a really good drafter, this is the spot that you wanna be on because you don't have to take care of anything during the year. It automatically starts the best players at each position, week in and week out. There's no kickers, no defense. Half point PPR is their regular ruling. You could join three person, six person, eight, 10, 12, whatever. Really cool stuff, they're really addicting. So do like a $1 league practice. You're not losing anything from a dollar. And I guarantee you'll get addicted. You'll find them really fun. So if you go and sign up Draft, I'll link the app down below, or you can go on draft.com and you use the promo code BDGE, big dogs gotta eat, BDGE you'll get a free $3 entry into a draft on the website or the app. Also, if you do that, if you use BDGE and you send me a screenshot, the first 10 people to do this is to sign up, send me a screenshot, whether it's through Twitter, email, Instagram, DM, whatever, send me a screenshot of it and I will draft with you. Send me a screenshot and I'll set it up so that you and me draft together in one of these leagues, man. It'll be fun, we'll talk throughout it, there's a chat and everything. So be one of the first 10 people to do that. Send me a screenshot of you putting in the promo code and we'll get together on that. Otherwise. We're gonna do a mock draft today. It's a 12 team league. I'm waiting for it to fill up. As soon as it does, we're gonna jump in. I'm just gonna kind of talk through my process and see what's up. So enjoy the video and give it a thumbs up if you do. What's good, what's good? So we're just waiting on one more guy in here. As you can see, there's 11 of 12 drafters. You don't know your draft spot until the last person enters the league. So the thing is um, about these, you can be in a fast league or you can be in a slow league as in the drafting process. So a fast league is 30 seconds per pick. A slow league is eight hours. So it's for someone who's not like really active, right? You don't wanna be, if you're at work or something, you don't wanna join a fast league and then have to you know, pay attention to that for, an hour at a time. So slowly, while it might sound crazy, eight hours a pick, it works pretty well. And you can do it over the entirety of the summer if you need to. So I have, okay, cool. I have the eighth pick. It updates as soon as it gets in. And this is the starting roster. One quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end and a flex. No defense, no kickers. Like I said, you draft a big team, right? It's like, I think it's 18 rounds. And then based on each week, every single week, it automatically starts the best players at Quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers. So normally my strategy for these, and we'll get into that as the video kind of goes along, is to draft a shitload of running backs, a shitload of wide receivers, because you're going to need them, and depth is key here. So I have the eighth pick. This bad boy's about to start, and this is what the um, interface looks like. Left bell goes off the board first. And again, this is half PPR, and that's the only kind of out-of-the-box ruling, which should be the standard ruling anyways. Um, quarterbacks get four points per passing touchdown, 25 points a yard, same regular for tight ends, running backs, wide receivers, whatever it normally is. So first three, Bell, Gurley, Johnson is what you'll probably see in a lot of these leagues. Now, best ball, I pretty much draft similarly to what I do in regular leagues. Um, but you want to look for more high upside guys, right? Because if you're drafting in like the 12th or 13th, 14th round, you're not really looking at those guys as starters. You just want, you know, if you can get someone who has a really high upside and they give you two, three really good weeks and the rest of them are shitty, it doesn't matter because they're sitting on your bench anyways, right? But in the first couple rounds, um, it's the same as usual. You want to kind of go off value. You want to go off the regular rankings that you would be looking at. Let me close this window right quick so you don't hear the garbage, man. Okay, Kamara went fifth. Interesting. So sometimes it times out if you're not – like on the fast draft, it's 30 seconds. So you really got to be like on the ball. So they went – David Johnson, I'm not sure who went fourth because it didn't register the pick. Sometimes it glitches out. I'm assuming Zeke Elliott went there. I'm going to try to draft him. Yeah, it says already been drafted. Cool. So uh, in my personal rankings, I have Saquon Barkley 
up at like five or six with the Kimura. So the fact that he fell to me, I'm happy about that. I'll take Barkley first, um, first round. You know, he's just destined to get so many touches. Now, I know this offensive line is not great, and I know that his rushing efficiency might not be there, but they are going to be an improved offense for sure compared to what they were last year, right? Eli has shown, if you look at his splits, I'm going to pull them up during this, that when Eli has OBJ on the field, he's a much, much better quarterback. Um, and I think that bodes well for the entire offense. And Barkley's a guy who, even if you only give him 225 to 240 carries on the year, which is not a huge amount, um, he's still so – he's an elite pass catcher as a running back, right? He's arguably just as good as Le'Veon Bell is. So uh, I'd project him to see somewhere between 55 and 70 catches, probably closer to the higher end of that too. So I love Barkley this year, any sort of PPR league. He's high up there, and I would honestly take him like four or five. Okay, so my picks coming up, we saw a run of most of the top guys. Ooh, I wanted Dalvin Cook there pretty badly. So this is an interesting spot, right? The 15 pick where those top guys, it's almost like a new tier kind of drops off, and Zeke is already off the board, so don't worry about him. Um, I'm not really worried about Gronk, uh, tight end, even though I like him at this spot. Again, this is half point PPR. So I'd be thinking probably of Keenan Allen, or I'd be thinking of AJ Green here. I'm going to stick with Keenan Allen because he just absolutely exploded over the last half of um, last year. Very good. Sometimes it glitches out and doesn't take it. I uh, I just think Keenan Allen is such a uh, straight pick this year, and, and his floor is great. He obviously has the upside when he, if he can go on a run like he did last year and the way he finished the year, he's just such a good target for Phillip Rivers. And, and when Phillip Rivers and Keenan Allen are connecting, Rivers is a top five quarterback. Allen is a top five wide receiver. Um, he kind of disproved the injury funk of last year. He got Gates out of the way, which negates 10 inside the 10 yard line targets. Gates was the second most targeted guy inside the 10 yard line last year among tight ends. Only Jimmy Graham who led the NFL was more than him. So with Gates leaving, even if Allen drops off a little bit, right, you don't really expect him to be a huge touchdown scorer, but um, there is opportunity. Even with Hunter Henry stepping in, you're not like, Oh, that kills Keenan Allen, you know, Hunter Henry stepping into a full-time role. Gates was so involved down by the red zone that even if Hunter Henry gets so involved, there's still left over for Keenan Allen to, you know, hit what he did last year. So in half PPR, I really like Allen. Now, um, the other thing is there's you're starting three wide receivers and only two running backs. So you want to keep that in mind. You know, you're still going to end up probably with at least six of each position on the roster when you're doing these best ball leagues um, because you only need to start one quarterback and one tight end. So you're not like drafting four tight ends or four quarterbacks or anything like that. And I'll explain my kind of um, – theory on quarterbacks and tight ends when it comes to best ball. Now we see oh, these guys keep timing out, so I can't really see who they pick. Keenan Allen, Jarek McKinnon, interesting, all the way up there, 2-6. This is a 12-person league, by the way. Christian McCaffrey I really like. He's growing on me more and more as a pick. Jordan Howard is someone I'm not super high on in, in PPR leagues um, just because his offense got overhauled and there's no way they're going to work him like they did last year because they really had nothing else going on, so they gave him 30 carries a game, right? Um, and he's not involved in the passing game, or he shouldn't be at least. So he's someone I'm not I'm not necessarily like staying away from, but if I need to reach up for him, he's not going to be on my team. Monta Adams, Adam Thielen, good picks back to bike there. Love Dougie Baldwin. This is the time where I'm looking at, and this is something you could take advantage of big time, right? Because rookies, they're, this this board is still based off ADP. So you'll have guys like, um, Michelle, and you'll have guys like, where are the other rookie runners? Rashad Penny's all the way down here, but he's almost a clear featured back in that Seattle offense, right? So this is, you know, you guys should get on draft now because there's ADPs to take advantage of still at this time, you know? People are not going to see Rashad Penny down here, but this is a money league. You could literally make money off of it. So this is when I would do that. Um, and you just have to be conscious of that. There's no way. Mark Ingram there, that's that's horrible. So I, I kind of talked about Mark Ingram, and I know this can go a, a couple of ways, right? He's suspended for four games. My thought process is that Kamara's obviously going to be the workhorse there over the first four games. I think he's going to do so well that when Ingram comes back, why are they just going to be like, oh, let's just go back to 50-50. Kamara did so well. We're just going to um, go back to exactly what we had. No, like Kamara's going to do so well that he's he's going to earn the large share of carries there. 
Now, people are concerned that Kamara might not hold up as a workhorse, which is definitely a possibility. And then Ingram can actually end up as a value. Ooh, Joe Mixon fell pretty far, but he didn't fall to me. Okay, so I'm probably going to take – I don't want Henry. I don't want Drake. These guys are I'm scared of. Um, and in terms of value here, I literally think that – wait, where are you? I think that Rashad Penny, even though I don't think he's like the best – Running back in terms of talent in the class, his opportunity, he's a three down back without a doubt. They're, they're, they're giddy for him out in Seattle. And to get him all the way down at pick, what is 3.8? That's like pick, I don't know, 35 or something. I don't think by the time real drafts come around, you're actually going to have the ability to take him there. So I would take Penny over Ingram for sure. Joe Mixon, I would take over Penny. Uh, but these tight ends, man, I've got, I got into them, you know, if you missed my tight end ranking video, I would go check that out. I'm just down on the tight end position as a whole this year. If you're not getting Gronk, try to grab Hunter Henry in the fifth, sixth round. Otherwise, wait on it and grab maybe Jordan Reed and George Kittle together. I think that's a great combo because Reed obviously has the upside, but he also has the injury downside. I think Kittle is in for a big breakout year. You can check all that out in the tight end ranking video. But uh, my thoughts, like when it gets to this spot, right, my Rashad Penny pick is when you look at the guys that are available there, um, they're all question marks. Like Kenyon Drake, yeah, he's he's good, and he could have a big upside, uh, a big year, right? But there's so many red flags for a guy like Kenyon Drake. Um, they bring in Kalen Balaj, They bring in Frank Gore. Balaj is an excellent, excellent, excellent pass catching back. Um, Frank Gore, who knows what they're gonna if they're actually going to use him or not. But I'm just saying there's red flags there. And then you look at all like the wide receivers and the running backs in this spot. It's all question mark guys in terms of their usage, right? Brandon Cooks, who knows what his usage is going to be. Geis, his usage in the passing game. Hyde, obviously, with Duke Johnson and Nick Chubb there, his usage. Um, Gordon, Jai, you know, there's question marks everywhere. So when you get down to here, my thing is, oh, I love this. Okay. So I'm going to make this pick before I go any further into this. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster is a guy I'm going to be picking on pretty much every one of my teams this year. I am in love with Smith Schuster. Uh, but anyways, I, my strategy this year so far is looking like I want to get running backs early because once you drop down to this, like this area in the draft, look at the value at running back versus the value at wide receiver. Like, do you want Golden Tate or Lamar Miller? Do you want Larry Fitz or Lamar Miller? Do you want Allen Robinson who could be, or Amari Cooper who could be wide receiver ones? Or do you want Alex Collins who definitely has question marks there? So I think the top of the drafts are so heavy loaded with really, really good running backs this year that you want to snag two of them within probably the first three rounds. And then you can get depth at wide receiver down here. Um, so Rashad Payne, I talked about, Ooh, I want to bring up an article that my man, one of the new writers I have for BDGE, my man, Noah Pyers has this coming out later this year or this, this week, I'm going to post the, uh, the article soon. He did a winners and losers of the NFL draft. Um, I'm hoping this is recording multiple tabs and not just the draft app. So you can see one of the winners and losers of wide receivers. He put Juju Smith Schuster. And I'm not, I'm not sure people actually understand how good and how efficient Juju was last year. If you just read this paragraph, QBR, Big Ben's QBR was number one in the league when targeting Juju last year among anyone. He had the number one production premium of any wide receiver per player profile. Um, third highest contested catch rate, sixth highest catch rate overall. Fantasy points per target, number one. Receiving yards per target, number one. Almost 16 yards per reception. Third in air yards per target, eighth highest in total yards after catch, despite seeing 17 less receptions than any of the guys that were above him. Any of the seven guys that were above him, had, he had 17 less receptions, but was right there in terms of yards after the catch. This guy was unbelievable. And when you look at his um, pacing, games where he saw six or more targets, he averaged 5.3 receptions, almost 100 receiving yards, and half a touchdown, which projects out to 86, 15, 32, and eight touchdowns. Um, and six targets a game, yeah, it might sound like a lot, but it's actually not a crazy amount. It's only 96 targets on the year. Mark Davis Bryant was on pace for 134 targets back when he played as number two in Pittsburgh. Um, so... People just don't. I, I don't think people understand how good Juju Smith Schuster is going to be this year in this offense. He was unbelievable as a rookie, one of the best rookie seasons for a wide receiver ever, and I think it's overshadowed because we've been spoiled with guys like OBJ and Mike Evans and things like that. But his, from an efficiency standpoint, he was incredible. He's a young kid. He's like twenty, just turned twenty-one years old. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do any of that shit. So he's focused on football and he just wants to get better. And he's 
I don't know. I, I'm just giddy about Juju. You see, you see, I took him as early as the fourth round in 12 team leagues. And someone's taking Martavis Bryant in the fifth round. Whew, sorry, Marquise Goodwin. Wow, interesting picks here. So, um, like I was saying, okay, Deshaun Watson, I'm still waiting on quarterbacks. I'm pretty much late, late quarterback in this. And the thing is, like, look, you can get Russell Wilson, Cam Newton at 5.8 or even lower than that, probably, um, if I keep waiting. But see, now running backs get pretty murky down here. There's not a lot of good options. When you look at wide receiver, there's still Alshon, Marvin Jones, Golden Tate. Um, a lot of upside here still. So I'm going to go with Golden Tate, a guy who's finished with 90 receptions in three straight years. And I know, like, typically, if you're if you're doing a best ball league, you should be looking for guys with more upside. And I've actually taken probably two um, – actually, all three of them are more safe plays than upside. But I think both of my running back picks are very upside heavy, right? Both of them could finish with over 300 touches, double-digit touchdowns, 13 to 1,500 total yards. Uh, the same could be said about the wide receivers, but they're more safe plays because I, I expect them to be super involved in the offense. They get a lot of targets. So it's just a thing to be thinking about when you're constructing your roster in these kind of leagues. You want a good mix of, of floor and ceiling. Um, now I have my skill positions played out, right? I have the running backs. I have the wide receivers taken. That's an awful pick. Don't don't pick Carlos Hyde here, please. Just, just get away. Just don't take Carlos Hyde at all in your draft. Do me a favor. Um, but yeah, these are slotted out and I would still absolutely be looking at um, skill positions if the value is there. So if I see guys that I really want, which I don't really see a ton of guys, um, I do love Russell Wilson, Cam Newton and Greg Olson. So I'd probably be look. Ah, there goes Greg. So I don't love the tight end values here. So I'll probably go with the quarterback here, Cam or Russell Wilson. Hmm. Oh, I forgot about the other running, the rookie running backs too. So um, I would be absolutely fine. Carry on Johnson did, oh, I'm guessing, um, I wonder where Royce Freeman went. Okay. I'm going to go with a, uh, a running back here. I mean, a quarterback here because this is just great value. Do I want Russell? Do I want Cam? I actually like Cam. I think he had, he has way more weapons than Russell Wilson does, um, on the team. And I think that's, that plays a big part. Russell Wilson's amazing, obviously. But uh, Cam, I, I put out a wild stat Wednesday on my Instagram. If you're not following me, make sure you follow me on there. Uh, every Wednesday, I put out a wild stat from last year's fantasy season. From weeks, I think it was over the last 11 games of the Panthers season, he averaged over 10 rushing attempts, 60 rushing yards, and I think he scored like four or five times. So um, the Panthers are pretty good down that stretch, and I think they know what they need to do heading into next year. His rushing upside is bigger than anyone's that we've seen in the NFL probably since Michael Vick. Um, and I just love Cam in this because his upside is so big, right? He's a great best ball draft guy. So to get him in the sixth round, I'm happy with that. I just didn't see a lot of other value on the board that I absolutely love. Um, and again, on that blog post, this is my man Noah Pyers. So um, he's going to be writing a lot for me this summer. He's going to be putting out blog posts. If you are interested in signing up for the newsletter on my site, which will uh, update you guys. Well, first of all, I'm sending out a sleeper a bust and a fantasy tip or trick every single week leading up to your draft. If you are on my newsletter, so all you got to do is go to my website, bigdogsfantasy.com, scroll to the bottom and put your info in for the newsletter and you'll be signed up. And again, you'll get one sleeper, one bust, one fantasy tip or trick every single week leading up until your draft um, from signing up for that and go follow my man Noah on Twitter because his stuff is fire. Let me pull up his name for you real quick. I think it's just yeah, at FB God, at FB God, G-A-W-D. The God is gorgeous. So go follow my man, Noah, right here. Ooh, that's a nice one. I didn't see it, but I'm probably going to retweet it. Retweet. It's a pretty good stat. Um, so go follow Noah. Go follow me, too, if you're not following me already. Nick underscore BDGE. Who do we have? We had Breeze go. Okay, we had a little quarterback run after I went. Russell Wilson, Wentz, Drew Breeze. Um, okay, Tevin Coleman's a guy I like in, in best ball because he has standalone value and upside. If something happens to Freeman, Coleman takes over as that clear-cut, three-down workhorse guy. But he's also going to have his big games where he breaks away on a big run or a big pa uh, passing play or something like that. So I like Tevin Coleman here. Um, those are the guys you want to keep in mind, guys who have standalone value and upside because injuries are going to happen and you cannot pick up free agents off the waiver wire in these bad boys. So you're stuck with the team you have. 
which is why I'll talk about it more after this pick. Let's see. Chris Thompson's a good pick because he'll have his breakout games. I didn't get a tight end yet. Ingram here is actually a pretty good value. Ingram, I like Delaney Walker. I really like the combo of getting Jordan Reed and George Kittle this year. I don't know why. Or maybe even like a Tyler Eifert and Trey Burton. or A combo of Jordan Reed and Tyler Eifert and then George Kittle or Trey Burton. I like that combo right there because you can get all of them late. You don't have to put a heavy investment into it. And you can stack up your other skill receivers. I don't like Jordy Crabtree. I like Will Fuller. He's a big play guy, so he's really good in best ball type leagues. He's he's a good player. Oh, damn, they took him. But he's a good player to pair with the wide receivers I have because, like I said, they have safe floors, but a guy like Fuller has great upside, right, because the big plays. Chris Hogan. That's an interesting pick here. Pierre Garçon. Sanders is a guy I like because he has upside. Um, cup. I'm going to go with Sammy Watkins. Not my turn again. What the hell? She says my pick. It's not letting me pick. What the frick? Bro, I'm pissed. All right. Well, it just went for me. It took Evan Ingram. This thing is glitchy sometimes. So make sure you get your pick in early. So it took Evan Ingram, whatever. I'm not actually that mad about it. Um, I was going to take – I didn't really get a time to look at it. It was either going to be Sammy Watkins or Chris Hogan. With Brandon Cook's gone – I know Edelman's coming back, but with Brandon Cook's gone – um. What you have to look at is the targets, right? Not the target volume, but where the targets were. Now, Brandon Cooks and Chris Hogan, both of their average depth of throw per pro football focus, which I'll pull up now, were very much downfield, right? And that's not where Julian Edelman gets his targets. So you have to think that with Edelman, Edelman coming back, right, he's going to take the targets that Brandon Cooks had. But they're going to be like at the line of scrimmage or even – before then, you know what I mean? Like he's not, he's getting from like six to 10 yards in terms of average depth of throw. However, when you look at a guy like Brandon Cooks last year, 16 yards for average depth of throw. Chris Hogan, where you at, dog? Damn, how far did he finish down? No, he's not all the way down here, is he? Oh, yeah, he missed a lot of games. So overall, he's probably down here. Chris Hogan, 13.6. So not as far as Brandon Cooks in terms of the target depth but still very much um, downfield as compared to Julian Edelman. So with Cook's gun, Hogan is like the clear deep threat on the outside. They're bringing Jordan Matthews, but he's been much better in the slot is where I expect him to play. They have Gronk as always, um, but they don't have any downfield threats, which should be Hogan's bread and butter, man. So Hogan's a guy I like, I love with up, uh, big upside here. So he's a guy I'm targeting in best ball leagues. I like Emmanuel Sanders. I only have two running backs, so that's okay. I'll eventually get to that. Um, I have my quarterback right now, but I, you know, when it comes to the tight ends and quarterbacks, you're only starting one. I like to take three quarterback. Oh, good pick CJ Anderson. I forgot about him. I like to take three quarterbacks overall um, and probably two tight ends because one, you obviously have to account for the fact that everyone has a bye week, right? And then you have to account for the fact that uh, your quarterback might, one of your three quarterbacks might get hurt. So that leaves you with two guys, both of which have bye weeks. So since quarterbacks score, you know, more than any other position, you want to make sure that every single week that position is filled out, right? If you if you miss a week, you're missing out on 20 points. Or if you if you take two and a guy gets injured, um, then you're only getting the production from the one guy. If he has an off the year, if he gets injured too, then you're kind of screwed. So I suggest taking quarterbacks because they are um, the highest scoring position overall in fantasy football, you know? So I would go, there goes, okay, now my roster kind of updated. I'm, I'm liking my squad a lot so far. Cam, Quan, Baquan. If you haven't seen that, I got new uh, new sweatshirts up in the BDG store. Baquan sweatshirt. Shaw Penny, Keenan, Juju, Tate, Chris Hogan, Evan Ingram. So my wide receivers aren't flashy, right? You're not like, oh, wow, those are amazing. But when you look at each one individually, they're all very, very productive. So I like where that's at. Running backs. Um, since I have my starters filled in these two positions, I'm probably strictly focusing on running backs and receivers for at least a long part into this draft. Um, and again, guys, the first 10 people that go on to draft.com or download the app and you use promo code BDGE to sign up, first you'll get a $3 entry into the draft, um, into a draft, a live draft, a real one. Um, but if you screenshot it that you're using the promo code, send it to me. I will do this, I will do this draft with you. Like we'll, we'll, we'll talk, we'll link up. We will do a draft either pro this week. I'll do a draft with you this week if you, if you do it, if you're one of the first 10 people to do it. So That'll be dope. That'll be fun. And I'll probably end up filming 
that draft actually that we do together and putting it on my channel. So if you're interested in that, definitely um, use use the promo code fellers. Help help your boy out, man. Help your boy out. Big dog's got to eat. I'm not eating over here, but I, I would. I'm pretty hungry. So, um, what do we got going on here? So in terms of value, I still think what, see, again, man, I still think wide receivers trump running backs here. Cooper Cup, Aguilar, um, not so much. Pierre Garçon, Shepard. I think they are a tier ahead of guys like Jamal Williams or Tariq Cohen or Chris Carson as running backs. I do like Tariq Cohen a lot just because Matt Nagy's going there to Chicago and he's been talking nonstop about how much he loves him. Damn it, they took him. They're going to use them all over the formation, I'm assuming. And uh, it should be an exciting year for Tariq Cohen. So I would have liked Tariq Cohen there. He got picked. In terms of the Green Bay Packers running back situation, here's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to be a split to start the year. Um, but I think Aaron Jones will be the much more productive back in any sort of PPR format. I think he is, I think he's a much better runner, first of all, but Jamal Williams was very good in the passing game last year. So I don't just want to write him off. Um, but all around, I think Aaron Jones is a better all around running back. So I think he eventually wins the job and any running back that's behind Aaron Rodgers, we had, you know, even when Aaron Rodgers was out last year, Jones and Jamal, whoever was the starting running back basically produced their ass off. Right. Um, and with Aaron Rodgers back, like you can expect, so much more. I have to run out real quick and then someone's dropping. I, I lost power and I bought a lot of steak. Someone came and dropped it off. Hold on. Right after this pick, I'll be back. I'll be right back and I'll talk about the pick. I'm going to queue up Aaron Jones. Ooh, love me some Corey Clement, too. Come on, bro. Take the pick. I'll be on in a sec. Oh, they really took Aaron Jones right before the pick I was going to take. Um, all right. I'm going to take Nelson Aguilar. I'll be right back. Oh man. Okay. Okay. So if y'all uh, don't follow my vlogs, I was dealing my, a tree came down and nailed a wire on my street and it, it knocked down a wire and the wire was literally on fire for like six hours on my street. So we lost power electricity like two hours before that. I, first of all, let me preface all this. I started a ketogenic diet this week basically means like no carbs pretty much you have to be below like 25 carbs grams of carbs a day so i went to shop right or i went to stop and shop and i bought a shitload of steak and beef like 40 dollars worth two hours before the fucking power outage happened so um my fridge wasn't working and i'm like god damn it just bought all this meat so i had i literally took all my meat over to my friend's house and had him put it in the in the freezer until i can get it back and just so happened that came and dropped it off right in the middle of this draft so Sick fun fact for you guys. I'm on a ketogenic diet. I lost power this week. I bought a lot of steak. And now we're back to fantasy foosball. So, again, here's the other thing with one, best ball leagues and quarterbacks and tight ends. Um, what I'm seeing, actually, is that if, if you want to wait on one of these positions, I would wait on the quarterback. Quarterback position is so damn deep. Now I wish I didn't take Cam there because I could have took another running back and been really loaded there. And there's still guys like Rivers, Matt Ryan, Patrick Mahomes, who's a great pick this year in best ball leagues because he has such high upside. If you want to gamble a little bit and go with Andrew Luck, you, you don't have to do it. Look, it's the 10th round already. Whereas for the tight ends, if you don't get one of the, um, the higher up guys, there's not much value down here. So you can wait on quarterbacks, although they're only starting both, you're only starting one of each of those positions. 
Um, quarterbacks are way deeper than the tight end. So if you're going to do that, I would suggest waiting on quarterback because now let me see who I could have gotten instead of Cam. It's my pick. Oh, man, I'm freaking out. I'll look after this. So, yeah, I can still get – damn. I don't have a lot of running backs. Damn. I like uh, De- Deonta Foreman so much, but now I'm kind of nervous with the the news that he is going to possibly miss six games. So Corey Clement's my man. Um, Corey Clement's a high upside pick. I'm going to talk about him like all summer. He's going to be my my guy this year. He is 5'10", 220, built like an actual workhorse. Uh, he was super involved in the third downs for Philadelphia last year on their way to the Super Bowl run. Very good pass catcher, very good pass blocker, 13th uh, according to Pro Football Focus in pass blocking among all running backs. So they're going to utilize him heavily. If you watch my last video, which was the top late round sleepers for keeper and dynasty leagues, which is probably one of my best videos I put out on my channel, make sure you go watch that. But if you did, then you know I talked about Corey Clement. Um, and I just think he only has a Jai ahead of him. They did not take another running back in the draft. They did not sign anyone through free agency. They did re-sign Darren Sproles, but I'm not worried about that. He's going to be 35 next year coming off of a torn ACL. It's hard to recover when you're that old. Um, I think it's more of a depth move, but Corey Clement, they love Corey Clement there, man. He is someone I'm going to be trying to get in every one of my leagues as a late round pick because if Ajayi goes down, Clement's already the third down back, and that should get him more work. But if he goes down, he has the size to be a three down back. And there's not many backups who take passing down work that have that potential in the NFL. So he's a, you know, he's a decently low floor play, but at the same time, really high ceiling. So yeah, now looking back at my team, I wish I did not take Cam. Let me see who else I could have got there. Uh, Where did I take Cam? The sixth. So I could have, yeah, I could have waited on Cam and then took Tevin Coleman or even a Marlon Mack at this point, Duke Johnson. And uh, my team would have been a little more solidified. So that's a mistake on my part, but these are things for you guys to consider, right? These are things for you guys because, again, you could join these and they're money leagues, man. You could capitalize on some cash. So if you want to wait on quarterback, that's a smart thing to do because look how many. There's probably legitimately 25 quarterbacks that I'd be okay starting on my fantasy team this year. And for those of you who play in two quarterback leagues, my thing is this. My thing is you evaluate it the exact same way you would evaluate one quarterback league. Who is the last possible quarterback you are perfectly fine with being your starting quarterback, right? So if in this year, if you're in a one quarterback league, right, and at, you say Alex Smith is a guy I would be fine with as my one quarterback starting, you you take the exact same analysis in two quarterbacks league and, and you say, okay, Alex Smith is the last guy that I would be fine starting as my second quarterback, but you just now have to take a quarterback, any of the quarterbacks that fall in front of him. You have to use one of your rounds above that to get him. So I don't necessarily think you have to jump on uh, uh, an elite quarterback because it's not like you would do that in a regular league, but you do at least have to figure out who the last quarterback that you like is that you'd be comfortable starting with. And you have to get him along with someone who's ranked above him. That is like my big two quarterback league kind of um, analysis or, or key takeaway for you guys that are in the two quarterback leagues. Let me go put my, actually, should I let this defrost? Like, should I let this thaw out regularly and like room temperature? We're going straight from the freezer to room temperature is not good, right? It's got to go freezer, fridge, and then room temp. I'm trying to eat steak this damn week, bro. I'm trying to get them, them muscles. Look at the seps, bro. Look at the seps. Your boy's getting lean. I'm getting shredded. It just do. It just do. Every time I go out to California, I like, I'm so healthy. I'm on like a health kick. and I end up losing like eight pounds. I'm gonna be a real big hardo here. Look at look at the Abbeys. Just look at it. Just look at it. Sorry, I'm done there. I'm a huge tool, but uh, yeah, every time I go out to Cali, man, I get into that healthy lifestyle, and I just I lose weight, and I, and things are just good. Oh man, we are hurting here at the running back position right now. Um, I didn't even look at things. Things are falling apart quickly, boys, boys and girls. Um, oh man. Oh man. Oh, Alan Hearns. I like that. I actually like, I like Alan Hearns or Michael Gallup more. I'm gonna go Alan Hearns. Bro, what the, are you shitting me? All right, whatever. These mock, they took Chris Carson instead of Alan Hearns, which I guess isn't the worst thing because it's, if Penny gets hurt, but like you don't, because he's going to be giving you zeros on your bench every week. So you don't necessarily want to handcuff guys in 
best ball. You want guys who can put up three or four huge weeks at this point in the draft. Um, so the Dallas Cowboys passing game, this is an interesting one. I actually, this is going to be my wild stat for next week. And this was kind of per, I'm, I'm paraphrasing the fantasy footballers. I was listening to one of their podcasts today. Dak Prescott, from weeks one to nine last year, Dak Prescott was quarterback two in fantasy points per game. When you look back at it, everyone's like, wow, Dak was terrible last year. But he was really good over the first half of the season. Second half of the season, he was quarterback 25. Woo! So what kind of Dak are we going to get this year? I don't know. Um, I think with a Zeke healthy for all 16 games, their offensive line should be healthy. They're going to obviously run the ball a lot, but there are a ton of targets available there for um, – for the wide receivers between Alan Hearns and Michael Gallup. What I should have done is waited on whoever lasted longer. Um, and I love Michael Gallup this year as well. So out of the two, Alan Hearns and Michael Gallup, I think both of them are going to see between 75 and 100 targets. So whoever's cheaper in your league, I think take that one and that'll be fine. Alan Hearns has put up, like, he's still very young and he's put up really good productive seasons in the NFL before. Um, so people still hate on him. It's crazy. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, we still have good quarterbacks left. We're not good, but I could probably take a quarterback like Phillip Rivers. There's nothing I really like on the wire here. Um, oh, it didn't even take Alan Hearns for me, did it? Oh, that's, that's right. So I'll, I'm not going to take him. We, you'll just pretend I took Alan Hearns last time. I'm going to take Rivers here. Dude, oh, I took him. Okay. So... That's the two quarterbacks. I like that. Anytime you have a running quarterback like a Cam, um, you do want to take a backup quarterback for sure. That's even in redraft leagues because the likelihood of them getting hurt is much higher than a regular quarterback. Um, also, a good thing to do in these drafts, especially when you get to the end and the picks start shooting by, is you can hit this little star on the side. Um, it's a little bit of a different setup on the app. It's obviously just smaller, but you can hit a star and it will put it down here into the queue. And that way, if you miss the time, those will be like the next guys that are automatically picked for you. So, wow, K. Benj is going all the way down here. So let's talk about K. Benj. And I saw Charles Clay. Now, obviously, they're in, and I like Cameron Brait there too. Obviously, they are in a terrible offense, right? Buffalo, they're either going to have Josh Allen, who's going to probably throw his way out of the league within three to four years, and A.J. McCarron. Um, who's unproven, so we don't know what we're really getting. We have no idea what we're getting out of the quarterback play in Buffalo. The wise assumption would be to assume mediocre at best. So you look at the passing game. They have Zay, Zay Jones is crazy ass. As long as he's out of his mental institution, he will be on the field. Uh, there goes Kelvin. Um, they have Charles Clay. They have LaShawn McCoy. And they have Kelvin Benjamin. I don't know if I just said him twice or not. But, oh, there goes both of my Buffalo guys. Damn. Anyways, uh, someone has to get targets there, right? Someone has to get volume. And Clay has been a guy who's gotten volume when he was the only weapon there. Um, Kelvin Benjamin will be the wide receiver one on the outside by default. Jordan Matthews is gone. Zay Jones is more, way more successful in the slot, so I'd expect them to use him there. I don't think they have – what else do they have on that depth chart? Let me see. Um, if you ever want to look at depth chart, you can just go to the, the player, just type in the player and then put Roto and just go to his Roto World page. And then oh, there goes Alan Hearns off the board. So we're pretending I had Alan Hearns instead of Chris Carson, which means that I need to go more heavy on the running backs right now. But this is just more of a learning experience. I don't really care what my, my team ends up looking like, guys. Andre Holmes, like look at their depth chart down here. Kevin Benjamin, Andre Holmes, Zay Jones, Jeremy Curley. That's ugly. So I feel like by default, Kelvin Benjamin has wide receiver is getting wide receiver three volume. You know what I mean? So he might be fat, he might be inefficient, but at the end of the day, volume trumps 90% of things when it comes to fantasy. So getting a guy like Kelvin Benjamin in the 13th round is fucking crazy to me. Those are the guys you want to look for. Um and as far as, like, the Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver core is concerned, I am staying away. 
I have no idea how that's going to play out. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I have any idea. <laughs> what else we got? Yeah, I got to look at – oh, no, I have, eh, I have four running backs, but I'm pretending that I didn't take Chris Carson. Who do I like that has upside? DeMarco's still unsigned. Hell no. Actually, actually yeah, Murray's a handcuff, but we saw how well he played last year when Dalvin Cook went down, and now they don't have McKinnon, so there could be volume. I'm looking for guys that already have baked in volume into their game. And I don't see, like, anyone here. So I'm actually going to go with a guy in Kalen Balaj, who I actually don't even like. Again, if you watch my last video on the top sleepers, I don't really like him much as a player. He's stiff. But Miami Dolphins coaching staff might just give him the volume because clearly they don't think Kenyon Drake can handle it. Um, and Balaj is a really, really, really good pass catching back. So if he can get some work in the running game, if they can give him – eight carries, maybe 10 carries a game, which I don't think they really will, but it's six to eight carries. And then he gets, you know, three to four receptions a game. He'll have a few games where he's good. So when you're at this point in the draft, especially when you're looking at running backs, you want to pick guys who, or at least in my situation where I have like almost no depth, you want to pick guys who already have a baked in workload. Now you can go for a guy like, actually there's like no one here. You can go for like a handcuff guy and hope on an injury, but it's kind of stupid. Um, but when you're down there, I like to I like to grab a guy that has a baked in workload. Um, I have two quarterbacks, tight ends. Who's left? And Joku, Cameron Brait. I'd be fine with either of them as my tight end too. And you do want to take to at least two tight ends because of course there's always injuries and there's always a bye week, so you don't want to have any of your roster spots open. But for the most part, I'm picking six to seven running backs and wide receivers. Probably three quarterbacks and two tight ends. What else we got? What else we got, boy? I wonder how this is going to be a long one. Uh, Benjamin, 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 Benjamin. And also, I guess I haven't plugged this yet, my draft guide. I, I am creating, for those of you guys who have not heard about it, I'm sure a lot of you guys have, my ultimate fantasy football draft guide, which is completely – internet based it's online on your computer on your cell phone or tablet that you bring to your draft it's uh it's an e-magazine pretty much interact completely interactive so there'll be videos there'll be blog posts that are in there that are not on my youtube or my blog it'll have my top 250 rankings positional rankings broken down by tiers it'll have my top sleepers my top busts my top resources again articles that aren't anywhere to be found from me damn there go that main there's not a lot of upside here, man. Joku, I like him, but, like, there's so many playmakers in that offense already, it's hard to see him eating. Eating hers, Vance. I like Vance McDonald, too, but, you know what? I'm going to do something crazy here. I'm going to go Ricky Seals. Ricky Seals. For no reason at all, but I'm going to go Ricky Seals-Jones. Um, draft guide. Yeah, so it's going to be awesome. It's basically, listen, I'm going to put out dozens and dozens and dozens of videos this summer. And anything I put in the draft guide, there's a good chance that you could find it in one of those videos. But what this is doing is compiling it all, all of my best stuff, all of my best content, plus some exclusive content into this draft guide. And it's organized. It's the only thing you're going to be needing to bring to your draft in order for you to succeed in your draft. It's going to have my Bible at the end, which is a huge article that I write each year for it that breaks down position by position, the strategy that you should take for each position for your entire draft in order to draft the best team. So uh, it's going to be sweet. It is up for pre-order right now on the site, which will be linked down below in the description. It's on sale right now during the pre-order. As soon as July 1st hits, the price is going to go up. So make sure you pre-order now if you actually want it. And I want to thank today's sponsor for today's video. Let me go get the belt. Y'all know what's coming. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If y'all didn't know, now you know, Ninja. Fantasyjocks.com. They are the industry leader when it comes to anything fantasy sports. They have championship belts. This thing is legit. You can get your teams engraved on there each winter, each year. Beautiful premium leather. They have rings. They have awesome trophies like a Lombardi trophy. They have um, rings, trophies, belts, draft boards. If you do a live draft, they have it for all different sports too, basketball, baseball, football, whatever you want. They are, I'm telling you, the, the quality is so good. If you have 12 guys in your league, have everyone chip in 10 bucks, and you have this thing for life. You can wear this around. I mean, you play for the belt, man. Winners win, losers lose. You got to have something to play for more than money. You want pride, but you want a damn belt. This thing is 
beautiful. I actually have to give this to the winner of our league. So thank you again for our uh, for sponsoring this video, fantasyjocks.com. Check them out. It's going to be in the link below in my bio. And uh, you can use promo code TAKE10 to take 10% off your order. And, uh, yeah, just have everyone in your league chip in an extra 5 10 bucks and grab something for your league, man. It makes it so much better. So much better. So we're about to wrap up the picks here. No, we still got like five rounds. God damn, this is taking slow. So I don't like to do 12 teams when it comes to mock drafts because it takes so dang long. Did I take? Yeah, I took a second tight end, so I took two quarterbacks. Will I take a third? Yeah, I probably will. I'll probably take a high upside guy like a Baker Mayfield. I like the scrambling quarterbacks because at the end of the draft, you're not getting guys who are going to consistently produce. But if you get guys who have the rushing upside, they'll have like one or two weeks that they kind of bust out and have big games just based on the rushing alone. So that's like late round for for quarterbacks. Um, I'm probably going to take another running back and hope that that works out, but it probably won't. Who we got down here? Man, there is slim pickings. Jesus, Chris Meist. Boston Scott, the homie. I like Corey Grant a lot, actually. Yo, Smith. Eh. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm just wasting a pick if I take a running back right now, to be honest. Wide receivers. I like Chris Godwin. I think he might play his way into a big role this year. Actually, no, I love Anthony Miller. What am I talking about? You're talking crazy now, Nicholas. Anthony Miller, he is my wide receiver one for rookies in redraft. If you missed that video, make sure you uh, check out my top 12 rookies for fantasy football 2018. I'll link it up there. Actually, I'm not, I don't feel like editing this video, so I'm not actually not going to link anything. Anything I've said throughout the video will be in the description, though. Or you can just go on my channel and uh, and search it, right? Just type in rookies and you'll find the video. Sorry, I'm really lazy, but editing takes so damn long, guys. I'm sorry. I can't done do it. I'm just going to – this is just straight raw. I'm not editing a single thing in this video except for the intro, maybe the outro. I don't know. I don't know, homies. I haven't been talking for a while. This is going to be a long one. Noise, noise. You could always speed up, guys. On my video on YouTube, you can um, select to edit the speed and put it to like 1.5 or 1.25 or something. So it goes a little quicker. Also, I have a podcast. This I put all the episodes on podcast. So um, if you'd rather listen to me, I don't put all of them on, though, because if some of them are more visual, like this one's more visual, you're watching me do this then sometimes it doesn't make sense as a podcast. So I don't put all of them on, but any of them that are just like me talking for the most part are put on as a podcast. So that will be linked below. Um, please, if you do subscribe, leave me a rating and review because if you do, we'll be creeping up the boards, right? I'm trying to take on ESPN. I'm trying to beat out Yahoo, Pro Football Focus, all those dudes. And I'm actually, we're actually, I'm, I'm going to check that out right now. When you go on, it's just called BDGE Fantasy Football. So you can also search it in there. My pick how we doing? I might take Michael Gallup. I'm just, I feel like, I don't know. No, I'll take another quarter. Uh, how many rounds we got left? We got three. Actually, I'm going to take Dalton here because why not? Um, so when you go into the po uh, podcast spots, all podcasts, I'm going to search fantasy football and see where we're at. Okay, so this is it. Oh, no, it's up here. I got it. You see, like, fantasy footballers, or Roto Underwear, all the popular ones. Um, I'm probably not even going to be on here. Damn. Zan, they play. Oh, let's go! So I'm actually ahead. I don't know. Maybe that's because I searched it before or it's mine. But Roto World is right there. The Audible, which is Sigmund Bloom, I believe, is right there. Dude, I'm, on, I'm up for the taking. I've only put, like, six episodes out there. So I need you guys to hook me up, man. If you mess with the brand, if you love me like I love you, go subscribe to the podcast, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review. And I'll hook you up if you do. I promise you that. So go do that. Let's get let's get my podcast all the way up there. Let's creep it up. Let's get on the same page as the fantasy footballers, man. That's kind of my goal. Um, not to be them. I feel like I'm fantasy footballers meets like Barstool, kind of. And I think that – what was I saying? Oh, I think I have a new video releasing in 10 minutes right now. I'm getting comments about it already. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm fantasy footballers meets Barstool, and I, I kind of relate to the younger generation a little bit. But I like – I think fantasy footballers is the best business, fantasy football business. 
I don't know if they necessarily give the best analysis and advice. They do give very good. Obviously, you can't get that big without good content and good advice, but they're the best business in the industry by far, and they're killing it money-wise, revenue-wise, and it's because they built it around a community, and that's what I'm trying to do with you guys. So um, the more you guys engage with all my stuff between podcasts, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, the more we going to grow and the more y'all are going to eat. Because y'all give me motivation. When I get a lot of engagement, I'm like, yeah, let's make some more damn videos. And then I spend all my time making videos. And then you guys learn more. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? saying, saying? It just do, bro. It just do. I'm so over this draft. I don't want to do this anymore. Um. All right. So I just need running backs. All right. Who are like random ones that possibly have upside? Oh, my computer's about to die too. Sick. Okay. So James Conner has upside. He has literally a floor of zero pretty much, but Le'Veon Bell has a lot of tread on the tires. He is not going to be reporting to minicamp, I don't believe. And uh, if something happens, James Connor's James Connor pretty much moves into the workhorse role there. He's not Le'Veon Bell by any means, but he has upside, right? Like you're not going to like you don't want a guy like Darkwa. You don't. He's a free agent either way. But Abdullah uh, Spencer Ware is not a bad pick actually. Might take Spencer Ware over. Nah, I'll mm, maybe I'll go with Spencer Ware and then Spencer Ware and then James Conner, and then we start praying on people's downfalls, baby. So yeah, like you don't want guys like Jalen Rashard, Jonathan Stewart, Kenneth Dixon. Actually, would be a decent pick here, um, but. Guys who, even if the guy in front of them gets injured, like they're not going to play their way into a workhorse role. So I'd rather have a guy with zero, zero, a floor of like nothing, basically. Like, a, like I just said, like, um, what was it? I don't know. Whatever. I'm talking about it anymore. I'm done with this shit. Um, James Washington, interesting. Yeah, Cortland Sutton, all better next year. How much time we got? We got 5% battery left. I only got one pick left. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. You know, Jonu Smith right here. This is the man y'all got to be taking in keeper in dynasty leagues. This is him, bro. Delaney going to be out next year, and that's when he eats. Oh, Jerron Miles, and that's a good pick down here. I might take Calvin Johnson. Just why not? Why not, fam? Why not, dog? I love you. Nothing I like down there. This is gross. This is disgusting. James Connor, where you at, though? I'm going to put Connor here. And Kenneth Dykeson. So I'll end up with seven running backs, even though um, wide receivers, you start more. But I'm way more comfortable with my wide receivers. <sighs> Get Adam on mentions, Wilson. Yeah, I actually have a friend named Wilson, and yes, he gets a lot. Actually, no, he's never heard the the um, the castaway joke, never in his whole life. So you guys should go follow him on Instagram and then, or on Twitter. His name is Willie underscore Walnuts, and then be like, "Bro, are you from um, Castaway?" He's never heard that before. It'd be so funny. All right, we're going to go James Conner, and that will conclude my draft. But again, guys, when I do these mock drafts video, I don't want you to really look at the overall team. These are more so like helpful for the tips that I give throughout the draft, just the different strategies that you can take and to see where different guys are going in real drafts, right? Like you're seeing these paid drafts where certain guys are getting picked. So you'll know when your draft comes around, like where you should have an idea to take guys. So it's not like, don't worry about the team that I end up with, even though sometimes it's shitty, sometimes it's great. Uh, that's whatever, right? I don't even really pay attention when I'm doing it. I more so just talk to you guys and, and give you a strategy based on what I'm seeing. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Pre-order the draft guide. Subscribe to the podcast. Um, get onto this app. Use promo code BDGE. Throw me a screenshot and I will draft with y'all. So I'll see y'all next time. Peace.